In this video, we're going to look at extended surface heat transfer, and in particular, we're going to derive and solve the one-dimensional Finn equation. We'll solve it to know the temperature distributions and the total amount of heat transferred by the Finn. We're going to look for solutions with a known base temperature. In all cases, we'll know the base temperature, and we'll have four different tip conditions in order to solve different cases. The first condition is if we have convection from the tip of our fin. The second is if the tip is insulated. Third is if we have a known tip temperature. And finally, the fourth is if our fin is infinitely long, such that the tip is at the temperature of the fluid surrounding it. So in extended surface heat transfer, we are trying to remove or add, in some cases, heat to a given surface. So here's my surface that I want to reject heat from in this case. And I may add an entire array of fins. We'll look at fin arrays later. But for now, let's focus on one of these fins and solve for the heat transfer rate through one of those fins. So when we look at a problem, I'll arbitrarily pick a geometry here where the fin has a length L. I'll say it's a rectangular cross section with a width and a height. And in order to derive our equation, we're going to look at a small piece of this, a little chunk of the length of a length dx. And of course, there's a known convection coefficient and ambient temperature surrounding this fin. So if we look at a small control volume somewhere in our fin, we have the temperature at that particular location, we have the extent dx, and we have convection coming into this fin at this boundary, which is a distance dx over 2 from the center of my volume. We have conduction coming in, and we have conduction leaving the volume at a distance x plus dx over 2. At the same time, from the surface of the fin, the entire surface of the fin, we have convection based upon that temperature. Now we're going to have to make some assumptions, and the first assumption we'll make is that we're looking at a steady state condition, so there's no variations with time. Secondly, we'll say that there's no heat generation within the fin. If we're trying to reject heat, it would be uh, nonsensical in order to have generation inside the fin. And finally, we're going to make a one-dimensional assumption, uh, and that one-dimensional assumption is going to require that the biot number is much, much smaller than 1 such that we can assume that the temperature is uniform across this section and the convection from this surface is described with the same temperature as the conduction uh, in the center of this volume. So with this one-dimensional assumption, we're essentially assuming that at a line at a given x, the temperature is constant in this direction. For that to be true, the biot number has to be small. Okay, so with those assumptions, we can reduce our conservation of energy equation to E in minus E out is equal to zero. And in to my volume, I have Qx minus dx over 2, the conduction coming in. And going out, I have the conduction going out. And I have the convection going out from the surface area. And that, of course, is equal to zero. Let's look at those terms in a little bit more detail. I can expand this uh, from the known value at the center uh, to the faces on either side of this volume using Taylor series approximations. So the heat flux or the heat rate at the face x minus dx over 2 is the is qx uh, plus the derivative of qx times the distance that we move away minus dx over 2. And of course the, at qx plus dx over 2 we have that it's approximately equal to qx plus the derivative times the distance dx over 2 to this boundary. And as always Qx, the heat rate, is always given by Fourier's law, the conductivity times the cross-sectional area times the derivative with respect to x of temperature. The convection term from the surface, because of our assumption of the one dimension across here, means that we can describe it with the same temperature at the x location, and it's, of course, given by Newton's law of cooling, h times the surface area times t minus t infinity. Putting that all together, of course, we get this expression, which greatly simplifies. Uh, in subtracting the out from the in, we get qx uh, cancelling out, and we have a minus dx over 2 here and another minus dx over here uh, multiplying the derivative of the heat rate. And so we can combine those and get we have minus the derivative of the heat rate times dx minus the convection term. As always, the heat rate is described by Fourier's law. We can substitute that into our equation. And in substituting Fourier's law into our equation, we get this expression. And now we're going to want to make another assumption. I would like to take this conductivity out from inside this derivative operation. And so to do that, I'm going to assume that the conductivity is constant. 
that enables me to pull the conductivity out of there. And I'm going to make another assumption. We don't have to make it. You can look in different sources and different textbooks and find solutions for cases where the cross-sectional area is not a constant. But I'm going to assume for now that the cross-sectional area is a constant, and then I can pull that out of the derivative operator as well. So if I assume the cross-sectional area is constant, the equation simplifies more. I have these constants, conductivity times the cross-sectional area, multiplying what now can simplify to the second derivative of temperature with respect to x. Now, let's talk a little bit about the surface area. The surface area is the perimeter times dx. So the perimeter of my cross-section, it can be any cross-section I want, uh, but it's going to be a constant because the cross-sectional area is a constant, and if the cross-sectional area is a constant, then the perimeter uh, of that uh, the perimeter of that cross-sectional area is going to be constant as well. In my particular example, the perimeter is, of course, 2 times w uh, plus h uh, for the perimeter of a rectangle. But we could put any other shape in there. So we'll leave it general as the perimeter times dx, and that will describe the surface area going around uh, this bit of cross-section in my control volume. Substituting that into there, and of course the perimeter is constant if the cross-sectional area is constant, I now have this expression here with p dx, and now I can divide through by kac dx and simplify this expression a little bit more. If I do that, where I have all of those things assumed to be constant, I get this expression where the second root of the temperature minus this combination of constants that I know, uh, multiplying the temperature difference between any location and the ambient temperature is equal to zero. That's my conservation of energy equation. So now I'm going to simplify this further. Uh, for those of you that are interested in solving ordinary differential equations, this is a second order ordinary differential equation, and you can uh, easily solve that for different boundary conditions. We won't go into any detail here, but I will get the equation into the form that you would look it up if you wanted to look for solutions uh, to these equations. And so to do that, we're going to define the reduced temperature theta, which is simply the temperature at any location minus T infinity. And if we define theta as this, the reduced temperature, then if we take the derivative of that, it's of course dt dx, the, constant, uh, dis is the, the derivative of the constant is zero. And if we take the second derivative of theta, of course it's simply the second derivative, the second derivative of theta is equal to the second derivative of temperature with respect to x. So we can substitute these into this expression and make it a little more simple. It's getting close to something we could look up solutions to ordinary differential equations for, but I'm going to do one more thing in order to make that easier to find. I'm going to define uh, this combination of constants as another single constant. So we're going to call m squared, we're going to define it as hp over kac, and that reduces my equation to second derivative of theta with respect to x minus m squared theta is equal to zero, and that's something you can look up solutions for. We're going to focus on the heat transfer, so I'm just going to tell you what those solutions are, but we're going to think about it for two different boundary conditions. The, the first boundary condition is going to remain constant. Presumably, we are trying to cool some surface, and we know the temperature of that surface. So I'm going to say that there's a constraint that the base temperature has to be fixed to some known value. So always, we're going to say the temperature at zero is equal to Tb, and the subscript zero is always meaning at the base of my fin. And in terms of the theta, where we've transformed our, equ our equation, that simply means that theta of zero is equal to theta b, which is nothing other than that known temperature at the base minus t infinity, the reduced temperature. We're going to look at four different tip convections. One, where I have convection from this surface. So this surface area is actively convecting based on the, the temperature, the solved temperature at the tip. The second condition is where this surface is insulated. The third condition is where this temperature is specified. That might come about because uh, this is actually some sort of some fin that is spanning two surfaces of known temperature, and then we would know the tip temperature. And finally, the fourth condition is an infinitely long fin, and if we extend this fin long enough, who knows how long that is, uh, eventually that tip temperature is going to be the same as T infinity. And so if we assume that it's long enough that's the case, it's essentially like saying that we know that the end temperature is T infinity. So let's look at the first one where we have convection. Now the heat transfer, the heat rate at L, is going to be equal to this surface convecting, so that's HAC times the temperature at L minus T infinity, and that's also going to be equal to the conduction just inside the fin. So that will also be equal to minus KAC, the derivative of our, of our reduced temperature, which is equivalent to the derivative of our temperature at the location X equals L. If we use that as the second boundary condition, 
we will find that the non-dimensional reduced temperature, so I'm dividing the theta, the reduced temperature, by theta at the base, t minus t, t base minus t infinity, is given by this rather unwieldy expression using hyperbolic sine and cosines, and of course the constants that we know, m made up of the conductivity, the perimeter, uh, the cross section, and the convection coefficient, and the convection coefficient itself. Now, the heat rate, QF, can be evaluated as that what is being conducted in at the base of my fin. And all of that energy which is conducted in at the base of the fin is going to be rejected by convection somewhere on this surface. So by evaluating QF, that which is conducted in at the base, we know the entire amount of energy dissipated from this fin. That's an, that's an application of conservation of energy. It only comes in here. It leaves everywhere else. What leaves has to equal what comes in. And so QF can be evaluated simply by taking the conductivity at the base. Once I solve my temperature distribution, the derivative of the temperature distribution at x equal to zero multiplied by minus KAC will be that QF. In terms of our reduced temperature, it's simply replacing t with theta, and if we take the derivative of this expression here, multiply it by minus kac, we find that the fin heat transfer rate is of course another function involving these hyperbolic sines and cosines. Uh, here we've introduced another variable, another combination of the variables, capital M, uh, which is defined as uh, these constants that we know for our problem uh, under the square root sign, multiplied by the temperature, the reduced temperature at the base. Okay, the second boundary condition is the insulated tip condition, so that's where we're assuming that there is no heat transfer from this surface here, and you'll see it makes the equations a little bit more simple here. So that's simply saying that Q of L is equal to zero, there is no heat transfer at that end surface, and that means that the temperature gradient, the reduced temperature, the gradient, the derivative of the reduced temperature, the temperature gradient at x equals L is equal to zero. We solve our equation again for that. We get, again, hyperbolic uh, cosines, or hyperbolic trigonometry functions, but it's a much simpler expression. So again, our non-dimensional temperature, our reduced temperature divided by the reduced temperature at the base is this function here, uh, which we can easily evaluate. Again, we can evaluate the fin heat transfer rate coming in at the base simply by taking the derivative of our uh, reduced temperature and, multiply and uh, applying it with Fourier's law. And we'll see that again, it's a much simplified equation for this case. The fin heat transfer rate is again our same M that we came up, capital M that we came up with in the previous case, uh, multiplied by the hyperbolic tangent of ML. So that's a much easier equation to work with, many less terms in it. Let's move on to the third condition. Again, if we had a, a fin bridging two materials of known temperature, then we would know the temperature at the, at the tip. And in terms of our reduced variable, we would know the reduced temperature at the tip. And we can again look for solutions, look up solutions of this partial differential equation for that case there. And we get, not surprisingly, another expression, again for the non-dimensional reduced temperature involving hyperbolic trigonometry functions. Same process, solve for the QF by using Fourier's law and taking the derivative of this temperature distribution that we just solved for. And we find that we get now this expression for the fin heat transfer rate, again using the same a capital M that we defined two cases previous. Finally, the last case, when we've assumed that the, the temperature of the fin, uh, the fin is so long that it's in equilibrium with the environment around it by the time we get to the end, so at the case of, of L, the T is equal to T infinity, <coughs> or our reduced temperature is equal to zero. If T is equal to T infinity, theta at L is equal to zero. Again, we can look up a solution for that. It's the simplest of all of them. Our non-dimensional reduced temperature is simply uh, e to the minus mx, lowercase m, defined here. And same process, taking the derivative and applying Fourier's law, we can solve for the total fin heat transfer rate, capital M, with the same definition as previous. Let's summarize all these equations uh, and all the different parameters that we've defined in order to characterize them. And for the different conditions, you can use all of these. We'll look at these in subsequent videos.